Hi and welcome to Office Hours. My name is Stepan and I'm a product marketing specialist here at Productive. So if this is your first time joining us, Office Hours is our webinar series where we take a deep dive into popular productive features. Now today we are focusing on project management and since this area covers a lot, we decided to turn this session into a complete guide for running projects in Productive. So before we begin, an important disclaimer, we will cover only the organizational side of project management. So there will be no um, financials, jobs or budgets. And you can find those sessions on our YouTube channel in the Office Hours playlist. With that in mind, now let's quickly walk through today's agenda. So we'll begin with task management, which of course involves creating a project first. Then we will explain the elements of each task and then how to define a workflow, how to add milestones, subtasks and dependencies, and what are custom fields and how to add them as well. Then we'll talk about the project layout, essentially how to create a perfect project. So how to create Kanban boards, Gantt charts, or just to make it more simple, and how to organize the project for yourself and also for others. Then we'll talk about docs and forms. So how can you use docs for project specification or discussion, and how you can create forms to collect feedback either from your teammates or from outside people. Then we'll dive into advanced features, more specifically how to create automations for projects to reduce busy work. And I'll also show you a secret new feature. And with that in mind, let's begin. Okay, so let's build a project from scratch. And to create a project, I'll go to project management. And here I'll hit the plus project button. And then now, uh, I can select if this will be a client project or, or an internal project. And the, the difference here is clear because client projects generate revenue and they can be invoiced, whereas internal ones serve for really only internal non-billable work. Uh, let me create a client project and uh, I'll do it from scratch. And later on, I'll explain how to create a project by duplicating another one or creating one from a project template. Now, you have to name the project. So let's call it webinar demo and then I can choose the client or the company for whom the project is done. And let's go with this one. And uh, next I can select the project manager and I can also add the workflow. Now, let me pause a bit because the workflow is a set of statuses for each task because normally tasks can be either open or closed, but a workflow can have multiple other statuses in between. Now, I have a predefined set of workflows but if you want to tweak them, you can do that later in settings. And you can also select one workflow and then change it later. But okay, let's go back to the creation. Now I'm asked, what will this project need? So obviously I will need uh, tasks, but I also want docs. Uh, and let me also add forms. And now if I hit continue, I can add people to this project. So I can either add them one by one. Let's say I'm adding this person or I can add them as a team. So if I select a team, let's say the design team, then all the people from that team will be added to the project. Okay, so now let me hit continue and then my project will be created. So let's create a task first. And to do that, you can either create tasks one by one, or you can duplicate them from a previous group of tasks, if you have it, of course, or you can upload a CSV uh, if perhaps you're switching from a different tool or you have your task data in like an Excel sheet. Now let me go here and create a task, but actually let me save you some time because I've made one before. So let me open this one. And the first thing that this task or any task will need is a title. So this is a condensed version of what needs to be done. Then here in the description area, you can add a more detailed description. And here you can also add attachments if you want, so they can be like PDFs or JPEGs. And then you should add the assignee. So an assignee is a person who should deliver or execute this task. Now in Productive, we have a quite strict rule that one task equals one assignee, because then there is no confusion around who needs to deliver this work. And uh, then ask yourself, does your task have a start date or a due date? If it has a start date, then you can add it here. And if it has a due date, then you can also add it here as well. If you want, you can make this task a recurring task. And here you can also set a sequence. How often should the task repeat itself? Now, if you remember, I mentioned task statuses in the beginning. And uh, by default, they're open and closed. 
but you can add your own statuses if your work has multiple phases. So in this case, I have icebox under consideration, open for review and progress and closed. But again, if you want, if your project management requires so, you can have only two statuses which can then be open or closed. Now, uh, once you configure those uh, in settings, then you can apply them to all projects. But again, those are fully optional. Now, once a person, or I should say the assignee, uh, starts to work on this task, then they can comment on it to collaborate with others. And comments can be added here. And they basically serve like message boards. If you have ever been on Reddit, you'll know how, how this looks like. Basically, all people who are involved in this task can then add comments here. And um, you can use AI to summarize comments and summarize all task ac activities. So if this task spans multiple like days or weeks of work, then you can click here and then AI will make a summary of all comments on this task. Now, this also involves all activity. So if someone has changed like the title, the description, the assignee, then uh, those will be also included here in the summary. And finally, let's talk about subscribers. So those are not the SNEs. Those are people who are involved in this task in some way. And uh, if something changes on a task and those people have been added to subscribers, they will also be notified. Okay, so now you know how to create and set up a task. And uh, now let's talk about how to organize and run your project. So now that you have your task set up, let's organize your project. And the way you will organize it is really up to you because we cover all project management styles from Agile to Lean Six Sigma. And if these words mean nothing to you, you can also use it for really simple task management. Now the key thing here is to organize your task layout and you can do that here. So let's quickly talk about all layouts. The first one and the, the one you see right now is the list view. It's for really simple task management. You have task lists and then you have tasks underneath those lists. Then you have the board view or the Kanban view where tasks are divided into boards or swim lanes. And when you move one task to another swim lane or another board, then the status of that task is changed. Next, we have the table view, which is for like database style project tracking because you can customize all these fields. And then the Gantt view, which is really good for like dependency heavy projects that have to have defined start and end dates because this is essentially a timeline. And for a task to appear in the timeline, it has to have a start date and an end date. Next, we have the timeline view. Now, this is good for strategic planning, for long term initiatives, or if you want to like build a roadmap. And then last, we have the calendar view. And I would use this if you have like a lot of meetings, a lot of deadlines, a lot of events. So whichever works for you, uh, just find it, select it, and now we can tweak it. So to tweak it, you can go back to the customize view button and here you can filter out what you want to show on the screen. You can use manual filters, but I would suggest that you use AI. So basically just describe to AI what you want to see and then it will figure out the filters for you. Well, let me just manually hit sort and then sort by, let's say, due date. And I'm pretty happy with this layout, so I'll hit save. And then this view, let's give it a name. Let's call it task lists because it contains the list view. And now it has become a tab. Now tabs always sit here and tabs are basically collections of data. So they can have tasks, they can have, you know, docs or budgets, and you can drag to rearrange them if you want. You can duplicate them and you can make them public or private. Now, this is really important because only project managers or users with sufficient custom permissions can manage tabs. So this means that you can arrange the project the way you see fit and then no one else can mess around with your settings. So if this tab is uh, now private, this means it's only visible to me, but I can make it public, but then only People who can uh, manage projects can tweak it, but then people who just work in this project and don't have the, su the sufficient permission level, they cannot change anything in it. Again, this is a great way for you to create a project and then just let people work in it without changing anything. 
You can also duplicate this tab. So let's say I want to create a Gantt view and I don't want to configure it by scratch. So I'll just duplicate this list, hit Gantt here, and uh, I'll just hit save and call it Gantt. And now it sits right here. Now, if a project is more complex or has many tasks, you can always organize it further using task lists and folders. So let me quickly go back to the list view. Now it's pretty clear that a task list has multiple tasks in it, but a task folder can have multiple task lists in it. So think of it as, let's say two teams are working in one project, say design and development, and each team has their own folder, so their work will always be organized. And to do that, just hit the drop down with the folder and hit add new folder. And then here you can move one task list from another folder to the other one. Okay, so those were the basic organization settings for a project. And now let's talk extras and improvements. And the first one is custom fields. So a custom field is a type of custom classification that is not available in Productive by default. A default classification can be, let's say, a, a, a signee or a due date or even a status. And a custom field is a label, like I have here, which is high priority, medium, and low. First, you would create it in settings, and then you can apply it to a task. And then later on, you, you can search and filter by this label. But what happens if a task has multiple steps or is like a big chunk of work that needs to be broken down into smaller pieces? Well, for that, you can use subtasks. So pick any task you like, hit add subtasks, and then here you can just create a new task. I say task because a subtask is a fully fledged task. So it has the assignee, a due date, a title, a description, but it's clearly connected to the main task in the hierarchy. But what happens if there is a connection somewhere else? For that, you can use dependencies. So again, I'll hit add dependencies, and then I will link a task to this one. And then here I can denote what is their relationship. So is one task blocking the other? Is one task waiting for another? And this is especially useful if you are using the Gantt view. So let me quickly go back to my Gantt chart. And as you can see here, I see that this task submit designs is clearly connected to this one right here. So I see that one task is waiting to the other and they cannot be completed until one is done. And finally, we have milestones. So milestones are just like any other tasks, but they really point out what is a specific point in a project or what is a specific deliverable. Any task can become a milestone. All you have to do is click on options and then convert it to a milestone. Okay, so that is how you would set up your project and task management. But as you know, project management involves so much more than just task management. So let's add docs to the mix. So what do you use docs for? Well, a doc can be a project specification. It can be meeting notes. It can be a place to draft marketing content or a space to collaborate with your teammates or clients, really whatever you like. So other than just plain text, you can add lists to it. You can add code blocks, quotes, images, videos. And because we are living in a certain timeline right now, you can also use AI to, to help you write your doc. And when you're ready to collaborate with humans again, you can also mention your teammates and insert comments so you can all collaborate together, kind of like Google Docs. And with that in mind, let's talk about forms. Forms are really the best way to collect feedback and gather information. So you can send them to your employees, but you can also send them outside productive as well. And to create a form, all you need to do is select the type of information or the question that they should answer here. So it can be a single select like I have here, or they can add text, uh, upload a file or add a date, anything you'd like. Once you're ready with that, you can hit publish and then you can copy and send this link to either people in your organization or outside of it, D depends on your settings. And then all responses will be recorded here. But honestly, a form is only worth as much as the answers that are in it. So I would say the best way to use these answers is to create an automation. Now, automations, as the name suggests, are automatic actions 
that are done when something else triggers them. And you can automate tasks, budgets, or in my case, forms. And I'll use the opportunity to automate responses from this form. So when response is submitted to my form, then let's see if the second answer is selected. So when someone selects the second answer, I will save this and then I will create a task if someone selects the second answer. So basically, when I send this form to someone and they select the answer that I set up here, it will automatically trigger a task. Of course, I can trigger other actions as well. So it can be an email or a Slack message if you want. But the important thing is that you, you can automate responses from this form. And the best thing about automations in general is that anybody can create them and there are no coding skills required. So now you know how to set up a project in Productive and you also know all the key elements that make up a project. So let's move to the part you all know and love and this is where we reveal a brand new feature that's not been released just yet. So let's talk about this one more thing and this is the feature that I wanted to show you uh, that we are still working on. And our topic is dashboards. So I'm looking here at a typical company dashboard. It has all of the live data and KPIs in the form of widgets. But what happens if, if I want to create this type of data center, if, if you will, for a single project? Well, now I can do that with project dashboards. So let me go to a project and I'll create a new tab, which will contain a dashboard. So obviously we have created a library of pre-built widgets. So I'll use this one. Of course, I could have created one from scratch by clicking here. But a library is a perfect place to start if you're not sure what to track. So now I have created a project dashboard that is completely separate from my company dashboard. And I can apply it to each and every one of my projects if I want to, of course. Now, these will be available in a few weeks. So make sure that you pay close attention to our product updates page. And of course, subscribe to our newsletter if you want to know when it will be out. Thanks for joining today and I hope you enjoyed this session and there will be no office hours in December, but in January we'll host a special edition roadmap review where we'll go through all the features released in the past six months and give you a sneak peek into a new AI feature that is coming early next year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then.